Fred, okay. are you asking for uh, yeah, you, guys you, for were, you said that you guys the holdup is the the um player you guys are designating. Does that mean you've already done the physical? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we we're we're for everybody's in all intents and purposes, if this is embargoed, we are done. We he just signed his contract. I'm just trying to inform the player that is designated at this right, point. Right, right. I just thought like yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we do that. Cool. Yeah. Appreciate and I, it. Look, for, 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 for your purposes, you know, obviously, please keep this to yourself because the player hasn't been informed. Daniel Duarte is the guy that is that is being designated for assignment. I'll just, I mean, I don't want to have to have you write a story and then wait for just just hold it until Butch gives it to you. But it's it's uh, um, we're trying to inform everybody right now. And I'm just easier. And for those of you who are not on here, uh, we apologize for the quickness of this. Nick is going to the Dominican, and if he doesn't speak at this moment, he may not be able to. So you will be getting this recording. So, all righty. Go right ahead, folks. You know, Nick, you said you were pretty much done a couple of weeks ago. Um, what what made this last move, this next move, the, the one you needed, and how does it bolster your bullpen? What do you like about him and your bullpen? Uh, you know, he, he's a different look, uh, extra lefty in your bullpen that is uh, induces soft contact. Uh, you know, he can go multiple innings. Uh, I, I just think that it's, it's a deal that we felt uh, we felt comfortable with uh, with a player that we, we really liked. Um, and, you know, for somebody that can induce in, in soft contact and be a completely different look than we have, uh, we thought we would, uh, you know, try to get him. Every, everybody. Uh... Uh, would would like to have a guy a uh, pitcher with the uh, that induces soft contact compared to the alternative but is that has that been an emphasis for you guys this offseason uh no i mean obviously you'd like guys that miss bats and induce soft contact right like that's I ideal so uh you know you're, you're just you're looking for to get the best players you can and um just from a with where we are financially and and you know i think everybody's doing the same thing uh, obviously, like talking with Brent, uh, when I've talked to him, he, he was pretty excited about like he's always kind of wanted to come here. Like, was this for a pretty easy sell for compared to some other guys? I think I mean, I think so. We, we've we've liked him in the past. Obviously, a lot of people, a lot of people knew him, um, whether it was um, scouts that went to high school with him or, you know, people that worked with him in, in Milwaukee or um, there, there's a lot of people that like have been around him that, you know, David's a Mueller grad and has known him for a long time. Like it's it just, it, it's great guy, a uh, good veteran leader uh, that it just another veteran leader that we can uh, bring in. And, and uh, you know, I'm just excited to have him. So it was it, it, overall. Yeah, it was pretty easy. Like one of those old adages is like reliever free agent market can be tough to predict. What was the reason for kind of going into that market this year? And what gives you confidence that, you know, these investments can pay off? I think it's just, you know, the more depth you have, the better you're going to be. I think, you know, we, we saw it last year. We got stuck a couple times where, you know, we had to add guys and take guys off the roster, uh, you know, one guy here, one guy here, one guy here, and, and you know, just trying to make sure that we have enough quality depth uh, to start the season um, and then also to get through the season uh, it made, it, made it important. I mean, obviously you want to continue to add to your pitching and, no one can ever have too much pitching depth. Seems like kind of like your rotation. You're going to have a lot of battles at camp for some very few spots. And it seems like, and maybe guys that were on, you counted on last year may not be starting the season in, in the big leagues. Is that kind of how you view the the situation now going into camp? Yeah, I think there's guys that, that are going to come into camp and, and, you know, they might've been on the roster last year that they're going to fight for a spot. that the so-called good problem to have to be able to have that kind of depth that you can you know instead of having guys just make the team because they're they have an arm and they can breathe this is an opportunity to have guys that they all you have several talented guys and guys that helped you last year very much yeah you know? i mean i don't i wouldn't classify these guys as guys with an arm that can breathe i don't know if that's where you're going with that but it's i mean i think no, i'm talking about like a few years ago or teams that when you're rebuilding or when you're you have thin depth or you didn't have you know you're adding guys i'm not talking about this crew i'm talking about Okay. Teams that are rebuilding. No, this your bullpen was good. I'm just saying, you know, unlike that problem that could be a, where you're adding guys just because they, they they can pitch, you're adding guys that have that have track a track record to a bullpen that also has a track record. 
Exactly. I mean, I think we have some younger players in our bullpen. I think we have some veteran guys now. Um, it's really good to have that mix of, of players. You, you've got returning guys that have had some some really good success, and then you've got some younger players, you know, that that have um, maybe a little bit more hit or miss that you know don't have the track record, or um, you know. So it, it's I'm really excited to have to add quality depth to our our pitching staff as opposed to just adding players. How much of a, an emphasis is it? I'm sure it's important and everyone would love it getting starters pitching deeper into games, or maybe do you feel with the bullpen you have now, you have more flexibility if you're getting more five, five and a third inning starts. Uh, you would always, you would always like to have guys pitch deep into games because they're pitching deep in the games. It means they're pitching well. Right. So I think that's first and foremost, uh, you know, after that, I, I'm, I really like the fact that we have some length. We've got some short guys. We've got some lefties and righties. Um, we've got guys that can do multiple things. They can cover a little better uh, the, the earlier innings and then also cover the quality, you know, as you get deeper into games. I mean, you, you look at our team last year, you know, we had you have three starts in a row that go less than five innings and we didn't necessarily have the length in the bullpen. Um, now we've got some, some multiple guys that have a chance to provide length. We also have starters that, that have gone deep into games. So you get a little bit of both that hopefully that, uh, that helps make your pitching staff better. You know, Brent's not a guy that you look at that he's not like those stat cast darlings or whatever. Um, what makes him effective and how can he be so effective when he doesn't, you know, we're in a day and age where everybody and their brother throws hard. Um, yet Brent's been so effective without being able to do that. Why, why what, what have you guys seen from that? Give me one second. Sorry, I didn't want to be rude. Um, you know, he, he, he's, he throws strikes. Um, he is a different look. He, he, he's, he's got deception. Um, you know, he, he's, it's, he's, he's, been, he's been tough on everyone. I, I think it's, it's, you know, when you have, for us, you have Hunter Green throwing 100, and then you bring him in throwing, you know, 86. I think there is a completely different look to, to, to bring somebody in that, that helps, you know, vary the looks and, and, and get better results. I think there's a lot of things, you know, the deception is really, is really good. And, and, you know, it's, um, he just knows how to pitch. He's a, uh, he's had some obviously experience starting is, is he uh, kind of a in the wings backup um uh, plan uh depth wise there if if needed to or is this just completely a thousand percent bullpen i would say this is 99.9 percent .9 a bullpen guy we've added hey, where do you guys stand with um jonathan Indy at this point the one guy you you didn't get done um with the the arbitration talks uh, is that a tough situation with him right now I think, look, I, I view arbitration as something where it's we're, we're a file to go team. Um, I think if, you know, if something comes up that's out of the ordinary, then then fine. But I, I mean, we are a file to go team. It's not something I view. I don't view this process as adversarial. We, we, we've got a number. They have a number. We have a fundamental issue of why we didn't get a deal done. Um, we, we didn't, you know, so that's why you go to a case, you know, this is not, this is no reflection on how the organization feels about Jonathan. This is no reflection on any of that stuff. We just didn't get a deal done. We, and that's why the arbitration is set up to, to settle the problem. I, I mean, we, we really like Jonathan. He's, he's been a good player here for the last several years. And uh, you know, we're just, we go to the arbitration case to settle a dispute that we have, but it's, I wouldn't look at it as adversarial or, or read anything into it. Anything else, men, before Nick leaves us for the Dominican Republic and the sunshine that comes with it? I have one question that we don't want on the recording, if it's possible. Okay, let's stop me a second. I'll stop. Uh, 